and I think practically, um, probably the the most one of the most interesting studies was Luke Van Loon's uh, study where they did this for 12 weeks with resistance training and pre-sleep protein feeding. They had a little carbohydrate in there as well. And in an applied aspect, the group that had the pre-sleep feeding over those 12 weeks uh, in the same mechanism, 30 minutes before bed, et cetera, those individuals had real outcomes, more strength, more muscle mass over that period of time. Now, the, the criticism was they actually had more protein in their total day by having the pre-sleep feeding. Yeah. So it ended up being like 1.9 versus 1.3 and the 1.9 group one out, which you'd expect. And so the criticism was, well, if you equated protein, it probably wouldn't happen. And they said, yeah, well, that's the whole point. You have a chance to take protein that gets your total daily protein intake to a better level, and it's going to help with these uh, applied outcomes. So in that sense, I think there's um, something to it in terms of like having an option. It's not going to do anything negatively to fat metabolism, and it's, it may help get you to a level for total daily protein intake that would help with a little bit with um, strength and some of these size um, applications that people want. What uh, did you guys measure like fat oxidation in like the subsequent workout in the morning? Yeah. So we didn't do a workout, but we did resting metabolism. Okay. So we could see if it was how that was changed and it, it followed suit with what you'd expect. Um, but when we didn't do microdialysis, we simply fed people in the morning, they had this increase in um, uh, total uh, metabolic rate. Yeah. And then we also looked at RQ, which would give us a measure of the fuel use, you know, kind of yeah. rudimentary, but you get this, the idea for it. And, and yeah, the, the having nothing kept RQ low, which means a higher fat oxidation and having casein did the same thing. Hmm. It looked like whey and carbohydrate were slightly uptick. Now, none of that was statistically significant, but if you look at the numbers and I'm, if I'm trying to be hyper specific about something, I would, in that case, casein sort of won out in terms of it looked like it stayed just like a placebo, absolutely nothing. Wow. And keeping fat metabolism higher. That's crazy. So yeah, because it kind of flies in the face of saying, you know, the longer that you are in a fasted state, the more fat you're going to burn in a workout in the morning. Yeah, well, we didn't do the workout part of it, but yeah, we, but I mean, if, by looking at, I mean, how much is really going to change when you, if you're looking at resting, I know you're, you're sure. And I think it adds what, what it does, I think practically is it gives people again, a chance to choose something that could be beneficial and won't harm them. Totally. And then you have just extra, you know, options to look at. Now, the criticism, again, that we get even even now continues because there's still big questions in this space. Like we don't sleep is like the biggest yeah. thing right now that we're looking at. A lot of people kept um, reviewing our papers or commenting on things we were doing, saying, what about sleep?